Prince Albert was a consort of Queen Victoria, and he was a man with big ideas. But not all of his big ideas were good ideas. There he is. Not all of his big ideas were good ideas. And uh, the satirical magazine Punch uh, made fun of some of his not so good ideas. So um, in 1843, they lampooned the totally ridiculous and uh, very impractical hat that Prince Albert had designed for the British Army. And here he is, you can see um, Prince Albert with his silly hat. And this silly hat appeared in Punch magazine with Prince Albert in cartoons um, over and over again throughout the 1840s and 1850s. Um, it was not a very good idea, and Prince Albert just would not live this down. But in 1850, Prince Albert had another big idea. He was planning an international exhibition, and manufacturers from all over the world would be invited to display the best examples of their raw materials, their scientific in innovations, machinery, art, and design. And Prince Albert set out his vision for the exhibition. And he really wanted the exhibition to be a living picture of human progress, a living picture of the point to which the human race had developed. And he also hoped that the exhibition would be a starting point for human endeavor. And in other words, the exhibition would be a starting point for new ideas. So this idea started to gather momentum, and a 24-man royal commission was set up with Prince Albert as its president. And they hoped to build a temporary structure in Hyde Park, just across the street from here, to house the exhibition. But this, there was an initial sort of um, enthusiasm behind this exhibition idea, but it didn't translate into a huge fundraising success. And Punch Magazine, again, took the opportunity to lampoon the prince. And you can see him here, dressed as a street urchin, cap in hand, soliciting donations from uh, the passers-by in the street for the great exhibition. Uh, the magazine also uh, <laughs> the, the magazine also wondered whether Prince Albert might design a silly hat-shaped building to house the exhibition in. He just could not escape his uh, terrible hat idea. And the magazine Punch was not the only one to poke holes in the prince's plans. So the residents of South Kensington, for instance, wondered whether the exhibition might have a, a detrimental effect on their property prices. And there was an enormous controversy around some elm trees in Hyde Park, which would have to be chopped down in order to build the temporary exhibition structure. Still other people worried that the huge crowds who would be attracted to the exhibition might um, improve, uh, in increase retail prices, for instance, or cause terrible traffic, cause tri crime to grow, to, to, um, to increase, or even force London residents out of the city for the summer. Um, that sounds a little bit like the Olympics preparations, doesn't it? But Prince Albert and the commissioners were absolutely devoted to this project. And so um, they, in, in May 1851, the Great Exhibition opened to the public. And it was more than a success, it was an absolute sensation. And Joseph Paxton's magnificent exhibition building was dubbed the Crystal Palace. It just towered over visitors. And inside the Crystal Palace, the exhibits were wonderful. There were exotic carpets, there were beautiful textiles from France, gold watches from Switzerland, enormous steam engines, printing presses, carved ivory furniture from India, the Koh-i-Noor diamond. All of these exhibits absolutely dazzled visitors who had never seen anything like it. 
And over just about five months, six million people visited the exhibition. And they all became part of Prince Albert's living picture of human progress, the living picture that he had hoped for for the exhibition. Now, the exhibition earned enormous profits, about 186,000 pounds, which would be many million pounds today. And so Prince Albert and the, set out in a meeting with the commissioners, he set out a plan to hopefully use those profits to build an international educational institution which would support human progress through the sharing of knowledge and ideas. And so the commissioners purchased 87 acres of land just south of the Crystal Palace site in South Kensington. And that land became home to what is now known as the Victoria and Albert Museum, the Science Museum, the Natural History Museum, Imperial College London, the Royal College of Music, the Royal College of Art, and this building, the Royal Albert Hall. This cultural quarter became known as Albertopolis, and Albertopolis went on to define cultural quarters around the world. Today, Albertopolis remains the living, breathing picture of human progress that Prince Albert envisioned for the exhibition in 1851. Its museums still house the raw materials, scientific instruments, innovation, art, and design, which Prince Albert held as manifestations of human progress. And its academic institutions remain starting points for new ideas, just as Prince Albert had imagined for the exhibition. So the Great Exhibition was a great idea. Lucky for Albert, it was a great idea. And here we are in Albertopolis today. We are all part of his living picture, aren't we? We're here to exchange ideas. And this, this um, Albertopolis remains, uh, th this living picture remains uh, a starting point for, for many new ideas, new ideas about sustainable living, new ideas about medical research, new ideas about art and design that will help to change and shape our communication and transport networks in the future. We are all part of Prince Albert's living picture. And this living picture looks different today than it did yesterday, and it will look different again tomorrow. Thank you.